I'm Scott Al Miller. This is my life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Now, Jeffrey Higgins asked me a question a few days ago. He wanted me to look at a bill that the United States is attempting to put through Congress. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about what that means. Not everyone knows exactly what stages of bill lifeline is like. It's it's a uh, life cycle. So we're going to talk a little bit about that and specifically about Bill S-1881 that is currently active in the United States uh, going through the legislative process and what that may mean to those of you who are looking at Nicaragua, considering Nicaragua and so forth. So this is going to be a little bit different of a topic than usual. I don't normally comment on these kinds of things, but this is a little bit interesting and potentially very applicable and it's very timely. And a lot of people have asked me about it in the last few days, so we're going to get into that right after the bump. Okay, I'm going to do my best to explain a little bit about what this bill is, what that means, and what it might mean for you. So, first of all, this is Bill S-1881 of the current legislative body. These numbers do recycle, so if you look that up, you got to make sure it's the current year, but generally that's what's going to come up. You can look this up very easily. The U.S. Congress does publish these things and makes them very public. It's just a proposed law, so currently it's nothing uh, too important. This is proposed by Marco Rubio, so if you look at S-1881 and you don't see his name at you're probably looking at the wrong thing. It also very clearly says that it is about actions against Nicaragua. The portent of this law, what this law is, the potential law is trying to state, is that they're looking to create a set of sanctions against Americans who may want to uh, invest in or spend time in Nicaragua. There's no sanctions that I can see, and I am not I am not a lawmaker. This is only a proposal. There's a whole bunch of things I'm reading into. Like, don't take this as, as, you know, some definitive resource. I know that a lot of people think that I have a lot of the definitive information on a lot of things, and sometimes I do, I suppose. This is not one of them, so you're getting a lot of my opinion and my reading into something that I'm not an expert on, but I'm going to do my best. So from having looked at it, the, the points of interest uh, from a purely tactical standpoint are that it seems as though from the current unedited version of the proposed bill that they are attempting to, if this passes, make it uh, so that Americans are not able to optionally invest into the Nicaraguan economy. Now, even saying those words, that's not super clear exactly what that means. And now we're going to get into a little bit of speculation, but I think I have some insight into what this likely means. Generally, when we say you're not able to invest into an economy, what we mean is you're not able to do things like directly investing in another business or opening a business of your own, things that are going to generate real revenue. Normally, that does not imply that you can't go to a restaurant and eat, even though just eating at a restaurant uh, would would you know, generate uh, economic value in theory. It doesn't mean you can't buy a house because you're allowed to have housing. Uh, it doesn't mean you can't live here. None of those things. Those those would require much more specific terminology if that's what they're trying to go after. And of course, it creates all kinds of very ambiguous things. Like, for example, let's say you're traveling in London and it does, this is very clear, it does say Americans anywhere in the world, right? There is absolutely no situation as it's stated, and this would be what makes sense, that an American abroad has no more right to do anything with uh, in it helping the Nicaragu Nicaraguan economy than someone who is not abroad, someone who's local in the United States or someone who's local in Nicaragua, right? If, we'll, we'll just say you're in England, you're in France, you're in Australia. These things apply equally. They may be harder to catch, given, but it doesn't change that they're not legal or not allowed, should all this happen, right? Remember, this is only proposal and it's only unedited. So just keep that in mind. At no point are we talking about something that has actually happened. Okay, so if that is uh, read correctly and all those things uh, works out as we expect, I'm moving a little bit because the dogs are of interest standing here in the background. I have no idea what they're doing. They're like checking out their fruit collection or just, just investigating the yard. Uh, and uh, uh, it is quite a nice day. It's very pleasant today. So they're, they're enjoying just kind of wandering around outside. The, uh, uh, the idea is that uh, you wouldn't uh, be able to help the economy. But of course, if you're in London and you're sitting at a pub and you say to someone, well, I hear that Nicaragua is being sanctioned by the United States, just making this law would encourage someone in another country to potentially invest in Nicaragua to take advantage 
of the fact that the United States is, is putting in sanctions. So let, let me give you some mechanics of how this could happen. So if this were to become law and the U.S. were to have these sanctions and they were to enforce them and you'd actually have a drop in American investment in Nicaragua, that is the, the, the obvious thing. Well, the act of having a drop of American investment in Nicaragua would instantly encourage Canadians and Brits and, and the French and Germans and people from all over the world to say, ah, Nicaragua is now a better investment spot for everyone else due to the unavailability of American investment. It hurts Americans. It may hurt Nicaraguans, but it helps everybody else. So all those people would potentially then increase their likelihood of investing in Nicaragua. I mean, this is super obvious, right? Once you really start playing it out. So the law itself could violate itself. The act of making this law could contribute to the economic growth of Nicaragua. It's really a law that only attacks Americans directly. It does do so, I'm sure, with the intent of harming the Nicaraguan people. It also, very importantly, looks like it is designed to bolster the government of Nicaragua by making the U.S. a, a boogeyman, right? Uh, it would be a very clear the United States is acting not as an enemy of the government, but as an enemy of the people on the ground uh, and as an uh, enemy of its own people and trying to do harm to Americans and Nicaraguans directly as individuals, which of course is just the same as rewarding that it is trying to support the government. And, and that can be fine, but it's not supporting the government in good ways, like we're ho helping the government do good things. It's we're trying to help the government simply maintain control. And you can argue whether you want that or don't want that, but the problem is, is that it goes directly against the intention that they're claiming to the American people that they're trying to do. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, because the thing that they're claiming they're trying to do is also bad, right? So there's just a lot of bad in this. Now, let's explain a little bit. So th this is very difficult to dig into this and give a lot of details because it's not a final law. It has not been looked at. It's, there's a lot of things haven't happened. So let's talk really quickly about what it means for a bill, because like if you're Canadian, you may have no idea what this means in American parlance. So in the United States, a, uh, a, a lawmaker, so in this case, Marco Rubio is a lawmaker from Florida. He has written, along with some other people, but his name is the main one, on this uh, bill. The bill is a proposal for law. That bill then went to a committee. That is the first step. And this happened over a year ago. Well, about a year ago. It went to a committee. That committee, over the course of the year, has looked at this bill and said, okay, this seems like maybe some more people should look at it. So it has now been recommended, but it doesn't guarantee anything, but it generally does. It has now recommended that the House of Representatives, Congress, should look at this bill. It does not mean that Congress will, but they probably will. If Congress decides to look at this bill, and votes on it and decides that they like it, then it will pass on to the Senate. The Senate will make, then make a decision to vote on the bill. If they like it and they vote on it and they pass it, then they pass it on to the president. If the, if the president looks at it and says, okay, I accept this as it is, I'm okay with what the House and the Senate has approved, then he can sign it. And at that time, it goes into law, or at least it gets a date set by which time it will go into law, right? It, it becomes enacted. So at that point, it is a law, but there may be a date attached to it. Like, yeah, there could be no further uh, investment after a certain date. That, that's fine. At that point, the American people have the ability to then sue the government and try to stop it as being unconstitutional, at which point federal courts have the option to review those cases and attempt to decide whether they're going to allow it to continue to exist or if they're going to block it as being unconstitutional for one reason or another. So those are the really, really basic steps of a bill turning into a law. In reality, there's some additional steps where a bill is proposed and either the committee or the House or the Senate or maybe even the president kick it back down and say, look, we're not going to move it on to the next stage unless you change something. And it's very common. That's not an exception. That's the norm. So if that happens, what we expect to see is that some wording of this bill will change. Maybe it'll change why it says we're doing it. Maybe it'll change what the action is. Maybe it'll change what the penalty is. Maybe it'll change who it applies to, how it applies. Any number of things may change in that process. So if S1881 makes it all the way through and does get signed into law and 
is upheld by uh, the courts as actually being illegal, which seems very unlikely upon reading it. But if you if you assume that all those things are going to happen, there's a really high chance that the one that makes it into law is not the one that we're seeing now. It may be very similar to it. It may be very different from it. We don't know. So at this point, yes, there is a law proposed in the United States that is designed to do a lot of harm to the Nicaraguan people without doing harm to the government. I have no idea why any sane person would ever propose such a law. I don't know what Marco Rubio's personal agenda is. It seems like a really nasty one and definitely not one that aligns with American values or the American people in completely divergent directions, right? If the, if the American people were being super selfish and trying to do what was good for themselves, this wouldn't work for that. If they were trying to just be harmful and they were willing to sacrifice themselves and hurt a foreign government that they have official policies against, this doesn't do that either, right? This is completely for some other purpose that he is set out to do. I have no idea what it is. It is an attempt to to combine the US federal government with a foreign government that is acting as a church, in this case, the Catholic Church, which is one of the few things that are a sovereign nation as well. Right, so the Catholic Church, it actually says right in it that the problem is, is that Nicaragua has not complied with and given deference to the Catholic Church. This is, of course, illegal in the United States. You're not allowed to have laws that say things like this. Uh, you're not allowed to select a church in any situation, policy, local or foreign. This is, we do have separation of church and state, uh, and as that applies in reality, it, it does allow individual states within the United States to have uh, official churches and things like that, but it does not allow the federal government to do so. The federal government is very strictly forbidden from having a bill that looks anything like this. So this is a clear action against the Constitution and the government of the United States. That does not mean that it will not pass. These things pass all the time, but it does mean there's it's black and white, right? There's no way to read this and not see it as an action against the American people at the most fundamental level of trying to undermine the values of the Constitution. The way that the bill reads is that the United States will punish a foreign country, in this case specifically Nicaragua, for not allowing foreign churches, foreign governments, uh, representative churches, to act with impunity within their borders. Now, in the United States, of course, we don't do this. Uh, if you're familiar with any priest or other member of the clergy of, of the Catholic Church or any other church who has ever been prosecuted for a crime, and it doesn't matter what kind of crime it is, go look it up. If you ever see someone who's been a member of a church or works for a church uh, who has ever been arrested for something, well, that would violate this in the United States. So the United States is requiring something of a foreign government uh, to not honor their laws, to not have protections, right? Uh, now, they, they don't say exactly the circumstances, but when you read this, it does not state that someone has been prosecuted uh, under the law for having broken a law. They have no complaints about that. The complaint is that it was someone in the church and that that alone, that people in the church cannot be prosecuted, uh, and that is what we're punishing Nicaragua for. So think about what that means. They are saying that the United States will put sanctions if this gets passed, right? Again, this is not passing. We're not saying that there's a single American who would support this. This is so anti-American, it's, it's mind-blowing that any person would put their name on this. It's crazy. It doesn't matter if you're on the right, you're on the left. This is so fundamentally anti-American. It's, it's foreign government, foreign religion, giving a religious body federal powers, right? As it doesn't get more non-American than this, but this is really extreme. And they're just saying right outright that members of the Catholic church should not have any possibility of being prosecuted under the law. It is so crystal clear that the U.S. is upset with Nicaragua because it has held the Catholic Church responsible for its actions. Now, if they said that it held it responsible for actions it didn't take, okay, you can make, yeah, maybe, maybe that would make sense. Oh, you didn't follow your own legal procedures and uh, they were treated unfairly. Sure, that would be something to complain about, perhaps. Like, you can argue whether that's or not, whether, whether that is something the U.S. should complain about or not, but that is not the complaint. The U.S. is not accusing Nicaragua of doing anything wrong. It's accusing it of doing the right thing. This is very important. It is accusing Nicaragua of upholding human rights and upholding the rule of law and threatening to punish them for doing so and not allowing religious affiliations to allow a bypass to the law. We don't know why the U.S. is upset about maintaining a rule of law, but that is very, very clearly how it is written, and so that's what it is about. So, 
what we need to worry about because the U.S. does what it's going to do. It doesn't really care how things affect foreign policy and how people are impacted. So at this time, the thing that we really have to worry about is what does this tactically mean for those of us who live in Nicaragua, want to move to Nicaragua, or considering a future in Nicaragua, what does that mean for us if we're Americans? If you are Canadian, or you're, or you're British, or you're German, or you're Australian, whatever, if you're from anywhere except the United States, what this means is there is a potential for a drop just from this being proposed, already there's a potential for a drop. This bill is already doing this. There's a potential for a drop in U.S. investment in Nicaragua. That means there is an increase in the chances for your investment. It is more likely that your investments in Nicaragua will be safer because of a drop in American investments. America represents the largest independent investment body in the world. So, and especially here in the Western Hemisphere, when you're talking about countries that are located really close to the United States, even ones that the United States doesn't have this bug in my nose, and really uh, do a lot with, they're still the major investor in the region. So if by losing the United States' tactical investments, that means you know strategically investments that are already here remain, ones that will come in the distant future will come still is just in this really small period of time that we're looking at losing American investments. We don't know what period of time that is, but it will not be super long because it will be a, a crippling factor to American investors. That means that the, the ability to invest a little bit less, that the price of things will come down, or stay down at least, and you have more opportunity for a smaller investment to do better because the US can't compete. It's closing down capitalism in the favor of foreign countries, which is again, why this is fundamentally un-American, why it is fundamentally an action against the American people. It is taking away the American's ability uh, to invest where it makes the most sense and increases that value to everyone else. What this means if you're an American. If you're an American and this is where you want to be, well, one, we don't think it's going to impact people who are looking to be expats. And as I've said a number of times, if you're coming here looking to invest, you've got to be really careful about what you're planning on doing because if you're, your purpose for investment is to make wild amounts of income, you know, you put in $50,000, you're going to live off of that investment and that's going to be your nest egg. That's probably incredibly foolish. I encourage people to invest in Nicaragua. I encourage you to do so only if you can afford for that not to be something that's generating you uh, income or or very much income, right? You really have to be cautious when investing here. So it's not that there's tons of Americans coming down and, and doing these huge investments, and it's not like you can't, we assume, come down and buy a home and live and do all the normal things. You can. We're not being uh, asked to leave Nicaragua. We're not being asked to give up investments we already have. It is further future investments. Of course, taking away the investments we already have would, would cause unbelievable amounts of problems. There's no way. There's no way it would ever, right? Even in the United States, even in its current climate, as, as wacky as things are, never would we have to worry about the United States suddenly uh, forcibly seizing all the assets of Americans abroad, because that's what that would be, right? The U.S. would have to seize our foreign assets and would actively be seizing them and either taking them for themselves, we don't think that would happen, that would mean the only alternative is that they're seizing them and handing them over to the local government, right? Those are the only options, right? So that's not something we expect to have happen. That would be completely crazy. What we're actually expecting to have happen is simply a curtailing of the ability to increase future investments. So what we expect to have happen, should this bill make it very close to being signed, is that in the moments before it gets signed, we expect a massive influx of American investment into Nicaragua, because once it's in, it's safe. So all of that investment will come into the country at a time time where people who are good investors know that it's suddenly a better time to invest than, than years previous, right? So people who are set up and ready to invest will do so at record amounts. Foreigners, non-Americans, will invest at increased amounts. The only people who will lose out is the Americans who have not already invested and are stuck during a time that this bill is in place, unable to move investment dollars into the country, and so they just have to wait it out. But you can still move here, as far as we know, you can still own a house, as far as we know, you can still rent, you can still live, you can still do all those things, take advantage of the lower cost of living, the incredible safety, the wonderful culture, the weather, and all those things. So I don't feel that there is any real reason that, and, and remember, we have so many mitigation strategies should something go wrong. We have no anticipation of things really going wrong. For people who are moving here to be expats, to be digital nomads, the safety here is really high. If there, not just safety from physical, yeah, physical safety is definitely really high, but so is the safety for everything else, the safety to hedge against weird political things happening from the US, for example, the ability to move to a neighboring country. I know that sounds crazy. These are so easy to do. These are so safe. It makes life so easy. 
you have to let go of some of the emotional attachments to but but crossing crossing a border an hour away that seems scary it's not right you just have to learn that it's not it is a very very simple thing that you can do at any moment and change your jurisdictions and and solve some problems should extreme ex things ever happen which we don't anticipate but should they happen we are ready and and this channel will continue to provide information for people on how to do that should you need to but for all of you who are looking at bringing your families here, those of you who are looking for uh, your, your lives here, to, to work from here, to live here, to expat, to do all those things, we expect no change, no reason that you shouldn't continue those plans, that you should be worried about this. Of course, keep an eye on it. Of course, be aware that these things are happening, but these should not be something that you're really concerned about, even if the sanctions go into place. One, they'll be temporary, and two, they probably don't affect you. The only people we anticipate that they are going to actively hurt are the people who are actively really investing in business in the country, which is extremely few. That is less than 0.1% of all of you. I realize there are some of you who want to invest. Most of you want to invest, but you would actually be helped by not being allowed to do so because your investments will not end up good. The average investment is a loss. So stopping you from doing investments under a really risky circumstances generally won't harm anyone. It may be an inconvenient. It may not allow you to do what you want. It may curtail your rights as an American. It may fundamentally show that the United States doesn't believe in capitalism. It may make you very sad. All those things could be true. But either just hold on to that money, keep it in an American investment account until such time as you're able to invest in Nicaragua again and just be ready to pounce at that time before the rates come up. Be the first ones in and be just prepared. That's one of the great secrets to investing. Or Feel free to invest in neighboring countries, invest in uh, Honduras or El Salvador or Guatemala or Panama or Costa Rica, right? Put those investments there, be ready if you want to pull them back out and put them into Nicaragua in the future. No problem there at all. Or get your money moved very quickly, start a firm, get your investments ready, move your investments into Nicaragua right now before this bill has any potential, potential, any potential of getting into actually being a law. And once that money's in, there's nothing in this law that suggests that you won't be able to maintain your, your uh, investments here and you'll be in a position for those investments to be even stronger. And, and just to make this clear how it works, you know, if you have a company here in Nicaragua or anywhere and you move your money into it, that investment happens at the time you move the money into it. Once, so let's just say you make Nika Corp and you move your investment dollars into Nika Corp. You move it from the United States into Nicaragua. The United States does all of its checks to make sure it's okay what you're doing. Nicaragua does all its checks to make sure the ingress of money is okay. You put it into that corporation. That corporation is already invested here in Nicaragua. It may not have done anything with that money yet, but it doesn't matter. The investment has already happened. At that point, that company can now take that money and buy property buy manufacturing equipment, hire staff, uh, pay for marketing or uh, pay a service company to create products for it, whatever it wants to do. The investment happens at the time that the money moves into that company. Once it's moved into that company, it's already in the Nicaraguan economy. It has already been invested and you're no longer applied by that law. What you can't do, should the law, should the law, which I don't think is super likely, but it definitely has some chance. If the law goes into effect as it's written, it will temporarily ban you from putting more money into that company if it's your money coming from the United States. If, if it's your money, it doesn't matter if it's coming from the United States. You cannot personally move any resources from anywhere in the world into Nicaragua uh, that enhances the economy if the law goes into effect. But you can take on investors from other countries and do so. It just can't be coming through you. So there's still that possibility that would get super niche, like you're, you're getting less and less likely with each of these things. But these things do exist as possibilities. So there are those options. But that is the, that's the fundamental thing is anything you get moved in ahead of time is, is clear. So if that's something that you're really concerned about, get down here, set up a company and move those investment dollars in. Even if you don't have a game plan together yet, even if you aren't sure where you're gonna put things, once you have done that, then you're free and clear. And even if this law, really unlikely, but even if this law goes through, you are protected against that and you can continue with your plans. Just make sure that you have enough invested that you can ride out whatever you need to, during the duration of when this law will be in effect, which we expect to not be super long and really, Honestly, I don't expect it to go into, into play, and if it does, I expect it to be shot down by the Supreme Court because as much as the U.S. is having its problems right now, this would take an extreme amount of problems at every 
level for this to make it through. So I know when we're looking at bills or laws or actions like this, they can seem scary and it may seem like you have a lot that you have to worry about. And certainly it's worth keeping up and knowing what could be coming down the pipeline and having some mitigation strategies or plans around what you might do should that happen. But it's also important not to look at it emotionally and to think logically, what are the actual chances that it could happen? What are the actual ramifications? If it did happen, will those things affect you? And if they do affect you, do they affect you in a profoundly uh, meaningful way? Or is it just an annoyance or an inconvenience or a slight change of plans? I think in this case, for almost everybody, unless you're really looking at a major investment, and people who are looking at major investments are generally also looking at mitigation strategies and alternative plans and have a lot of, normally, ability to work around these things, which is one of the reasons why laws like this don't tend to be very effective, is because those with resources are simply, in many cases, unaffected by them, and those that are are pretty well situated to work around them in very convenient ways, such as simply investing earlier than they expected or through a third party or whatever, or they have the legal mechanisms to work, you know, to work to overturn the law uh, or to have it uh, defined in a more narrow way. So in general, I think, yes, definitely pay attention. But for the majority of my audience, nearly all of you, this is going to be zero impact. And for a small number of you, it's going to be a minor impact. I'd be very surprised if this ends up in a situation where anybody's affected, let alone anyone's affected really strongly. But yes, it is, it is certainly always good to pay attention and know what actions your government may take that affect your freedoms as an American. Having them suddenly take away your right to invest anywhere that you want in places where there's no reason not to be investing that you've been planning on, that is where you live or whatever, is definitely not something that you sit around thinking is going to happen or want to be prepared for. But especially as Americans, it's important to understand that there are actions like this that could happen where they're simply taking away your uh, access to the free market market. Uh, and, and yeah, sometimes you have to worry about that. But it is not that much of a free market in the United States. You're used to working with these limitations on a semi-regular basis. As an investor, you're always having to think about how these things may play in. Uh, and it's just part of doing business as an American. So thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support this channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. As always, share on social media, tell your friends about the show. Think critically, do your own research, Follow for the latest updates as we hear as things happen. And I will see all of you tomorrow.